Boxer's Fracture What is a boxer's fracture? Boxer's fracture is a broken bone of the hand, normally occurs at the neck of the fifth metacarpal. It usually occurs when striking a firm object, it can be a wall or maybe the opponent during boxing, usually that happens with a clenched fist. The head of the metacarpal bone forms the knuckle during an enclosed fist. The end of the fifth metacarpal takes the force of the impact and breaks at its neck and angulate towards the palm, creating a dorsal bump. You can see here the fracture of the metacarpal neck. Patients who sustain a boxer fracture commonly complain of pain, swelling, and the deformity at the base of their small finger. The X-ray are needed to diagnose the fracture and the angulation of this fracture. A true lateral radiograph is needed. The normal metacarpal neck angle is 15 degrees. So if the angulation measures 40 degrees on the x-rays, then it's actually 25 degrees of real angulation. The fracture usually displaces with dorsal angulation and the metacarpal head is displaced palmarly, which can result in clawing. Here you can see the metacarpals and here you can see the neck of the metacarpals. And also there is the CMC joint. The CMC joint is the carbometacarbal joint. The second and the third CMC joints are not mobile. If you break the second or the third metacarbal neck, the deformity is not acceptable because the carbometacarbal joint is not mobile. To accept some deformity, you need to have compensatory mobility of the CMC joint. Compensatory movement takes place at the mobile CMC joints of the fourth and the fifth fingers. The movement is 10 to 15 degree in the fourth and 20 to 30 degree in the fifth, and that can help in guiding the treatment. Less than 40 degree of the deformity in the fifth metacarpal shaft is acceptable. Less than 50 to 60 degree of angulation deformity in the fifth metacarpal neck is acceptable. The surgeon is less likely to correct the deformity in the fifth metacarpal because there is a compensatory mobility of the CMC joint. The patient may end by a bump at the knuckle, but it usually doesn't affect the hand function. Practically speaking, any deformity more than 50 degrees require possible intervention to avoid pseudo-clawing. Treatment usually is splint that will allow the fracture to heal, especially if the deformity is not severe. You may need close reduction and splinting to improve the deformity. Apply the splint in the position of hand function, which is extension of the wrist and flexion of the MCP joint. Usually an ulnar gutter splint is used. Boxer's fracture is usually angulated. The angulation is usually tolerable and the outcome is usually good. Occasionally it have rotational deformity and if it has rotational deformity, it will need to be corrected. Acceptable outcome is reported even when the angulation is as high as 50, 60 degrees, when the majority of the fractures are treated without surgery. Some studies found there is no difference in outcome in pain, in satisfaction, in range of motion, in grip strength, when you compare body taping with splinting. There is some opinion, just give the patient body tape and schedule appointment as needed, and you're gonna do just fine with an optional follow-up. 
Some doctors believe that the reduction, the casting, the scheduled appointment, and more x-rays may be unnecessary. And maybe we're adding a burden to the patient and to the healthcare. So it seems like boxer's fracture management may not be a big deal. However, some doctors believe the opposite, that they should follow their patient closely. Surgery is rarely done. Surgery is done utilizing K-wires percutaneously intramedullary, or we use percutaneous K-wire fixation stabilizing the fifth metacarpal to the fourth metacarpal. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.